we have uh, now uh, Hiroshi Mikitani, who is the CEO of uh, Rakuten. Um, and Paul Papadimi to you. Uh, please join me on stage. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hello. Uh, Welcome back, <laughs> Miki. Sorry to be late. How are you? It's, good, great good, to, good. it's great to have you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, much. very lucky indeed. Please, have a seat. Hello, everyone. Hello, Miki. How are Hello. you? Good, good, good. So, Lakuten, maybe when people think about Lakuten, everybody thinks first as well about you know, marketplace, and the first comparison that comes is Amazon. But you have a very different business model, right? And you have a business model that is driven through acquisitions, for instance. So you made some acquisitions in France, correct, four years uh, ago? Yes, we uh, acquired uh, Price Minister, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the largest marketplaces uh, in, uh, in France. In France, and also in the UK, right? You played UK, we Play.com, and uh, we are in the midst of uh, converting. As you know, um, Play.com was uh, pretty much media-driven uh, e-commerce company. Uh, we are trying to convert it to more general uh, marketplace. But you're also just changing the name, right? You're going from Play.com to Lakuten. So you want to create Lakuten as a global brand? Yes, of course. Uh, Play.com uh, was a great name uh, for setting DVD and CD, but now we are trying to outgrow uh, from that specific category to become more general uh, e-commerce. So. So are you, are you trying to, because in, in Japan, you, uh, tr you work a lot with merchants, right? This is, you offer this marketplace for merchants. Is that the kind of model you're trying to create in all the other places in the world you're active in? Well, you know, Lakuten has started as B2B to C marketplace. I think we are the original inventor of the business model. Uh, but since then, uh, you know, we have been diversifying our businesses uh, to other uh, services, such as travel, online banking, credit card. So uh, I think uh, even for the e-commerce, uh, we recently acquired a company called Ebates, which is uh, basically a cashback reward program yeah. membership company. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think e-commerce is evolving. Uh, and maybe in the future, what we are doing may become sort of obsolete. So I think we need to constantly try uh, new things organically and through acquisitions. So how do you do that? I mean, of course, I guess you have initiatives in mobile, right? You're working a lot with uh, M-commerce. M Is that something you do a lot? Well, it's all, already Rakuten has a huge market share uh, in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, even with that big market share, uh, over 40%. Uh, of our transaction is coming from uh, smartphones. smartphones. And for next year, it, we're going to go over 50%. So and that's in Japan, though? That's in Japan, yes. I mean, other countries as well. Then, you know, uh, we recently uh, acquired Viber, which is the, uh, one of the most popular messaging applications in the world. And we are trying to re, uh, become a major player on the mobile uh, related businesses. So, yeah, Viber is like something for those who don't know, it is a bit like. WhatsApp Plus, because there's more features than WhatsApp, is closer to something you already have in Japan, Line, which is, I guess, one of your competitors now. So are you trying also to push commerce through Viber? Or is this, for the moment, just a messaging platform? Well, in my opinion, uh, probably among the, uh, the major uh, messaging applications, probably Viber has the best technology. Uh, it has the, the clear list. Uh, the voice, uh, you know, connection. Uh, the video works very well. We recently launched public chat. I think it is probably the most secure, uh, you know, uh, messaging apps uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, we have, uh, you know, close to 250 million uh, monthly active users. And we are adding somewhere between uh, 600 to 700,000 new users, not ID, new users every day. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, there are v various ways uh, we can uh, monetize it. One is through Viber Out. You know, you, you can uh, use it as our uh, digital content funnel. Uh, it can function as a gaming platform. Uh, and also, it can help 
uh, our e-commerce business as well. Oh, uh, because that would be interesting indeed, because we know, and I'm sorry to again use the competition, but we know the line actually makes uh, good money uh, on selling stickers, creative stickers. They were, uh, WeChat in, in China uh, allows brands, a little bit like Facebook pages, for those who don't know WeChat, allows also brands to actually do uh, e-commerce directly on the platform. And uh, this is this is in big, very big numbers. So do you think that strategy will, because in, in Asia it seems to be working, in Europe and in the US we haven't seen that kind of play uh, active yet. So would you be one of the first to try to do that, to expand Viber into something more uh, commercially viable in, in for, for brands in Europe and the US? Oh, definitely yes. Uh, you know, WhatsApp uh, basically self-constrained themselves uh, by announcing that, that they are not going to do any commercial services. Uh, you know, uh, and there are several smaller messaging applications uh, which is already enjoying the uh, uh, making business on games uh, and definitely uh, the Viber is the I think most uh, engaged uh, messaging applications and the difference between uh, again uh, the Viber and other messaging apps is not for, from coming from text uh, messaging it's coming from the voice uh, WhatsApp, uh, the voice is not still available. The, we hear many complaints uh, from users about the quality of other messaging apps okay. uh, in terms of voice communication. You know, if you use Viber, it's uh, basically uh, the, uh, you know, what we call Cindy uh, quality. Uh, and I think in the future, voice and text uh, will be mixed and you need to have both. And uh, that's where the fundamental difference uh, resides between, between uh, Viber and other messaging and apps. Other messaging apps. Okay, your tagline is uh, "Shopping is entertainment," right? Uh, so entertainment plays seems to be playing a big role because you have, you know, as you mentioned yourself, uh, games. You mentioned uh, talking about um, about Viber just a minute ago. You just also acquired a company that is like similar to, and again, sorry to uh, mention competition, similar to Netflix. I think I've, I've had in my notes. Uh, Wacky. Wacky, yes. Yeah. So why? Well, again, Lactin now has a uh, you know, huge membership base uh, globally. And our vision is, you know, we're going to position our membership and, and our brand in the middle. And we're going to have three different uh, businesses around it, surrounding it. One is definitely e-commerce. The other is finance. We are very strong, uh, you know, online finance player in Japan, and we're trying to globalize it. And we also want to have a digital. Uh, digital content is, in my opinion, uh, the alternative of packaged media. Uh, of course, people may buy DVD package still or they can you know, stream, uh, video, video streaming. So it's an alternative and as a general uh, e-commerce destination site, you need to have the digital uh, services. You, you are, I mean, you just mentioned you were attempting to globalize your, the finance part of the, the three divisions you mentioned. Uh, you're a bit of an outlier, if I, may, if I may use the term, in Japan, because we haven't seen that many Japanese brands success successfully go international. I, I mean, we have the stories of you know, Sony and Toyota, but these were, uh, and I'm not diminishing their success, but these were manufacturers. You're, you're, pro you're producing your, a service, commerce, digital. So how do you see, do you see, do you think you can be the first one to actually really achieve a success for a Japanese company internationally? I mean, you've already shown success, but will you continue this way? Well, I hope so. <laughs> uh, one thing we did very differently uh, from other companies uh, is language. Uh, we converted our internal communication language from Japanese to English four years ago. Uh, we have been working extremely hard to you know, really uh, motivate and uh, somehow force our employees to communicate. Somehow to force, so you, yeah. you have to, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very, very uh, sensitive and difficult issue. Yeah. Right? And uh, so we had to do it. But the outcome uh, was uh, significant. 80% uh, of new engineers we're hiring in Japan are non-Japanese. And uh, we are very, very uh, diversified company. And new ideas, the uh, technology excellence uh, is coming from our diversity. So uh, I think that's core of our, uh, you know, uh, company. 
Yeah, a, you have an initiative, I think it's also based in France, the uh, RIT, the Rakuten Institute of Technology, yes. right? Can you explain us a bit what it is? Well, it you know, plays into that yes, role. of course. Uh, for example, Google has uh, Google X, where an engineer can do, uh, I don't know how much time they can spend, uh, maybe 10 or 20% of their time uh, on whatever they want to do. Uh, we created a lab called Rakuten Institute of Technology, where we have uh, close to 50 uh, the, the researchers and increasing, uh, all PhD level, oh. uh, and they do not have any assignment. Uh, they can do whatever they want. Uh, but, you know, they have uh, all these, uh, how you call it, uh, materials in front of them. So uh, they will always come up with very, very productive suggestions and ideas and, and projects. So some of them are, do, have some of them already transferred into business for for Lacuten, or? So many. Oh. Our, pla our cloud platform uh, were developed uh, by them. Recommendation engine, uh, product taxation, uh, natural language, uh, you know, analysis. Um, you know, most of them are uh, in the security wise. Most of them are already, you know, uh, commercially uh, used internally and sometimes externally. Externally as well. The, uh, so one of these schools is, school, sorry, the institute is here in, in, in France. As well, in Paris, yeah, yes. In France. How do you, because you mentioned that you were trying in Japan to force, or at least to make people talk English as a main language of the company. Do you see as well, because it's nothing to do with language, a cultural shock when you acquire, for instance, a new company, like you did with Price Minister here in France, uh, do you see also a cultural difference in terms of how people, and employees operate, engineers operate? Is it easy for you to mix these cultures together? Well, of course there's a cultural difference. Cultural difference between countries and cultural difference between uh, companies. Uh, and we need to you know, some, uh, somehow accommodate the difference but at the same time, we need to be on the same board. Uh, so, of course, culture is very important, but uh, to begin with, uh, to be able to communicate uh, with the same language is very, very critical. I was talking with uh, the uh, Luno uh, Nissan team, mm -hmm. and uh, they really uh, emphasized the importance of language. Uh, what is critical, if we can speak uh, each other, like us, I think we can understand each other. But if you have a, always a translator in the middle, it is almost impossible to to really, you know, uh, how do you call it, uh, you know, become true friends yeah, true. Uh, or true family members. Uh, so I thought about this uh, four years ago and decided to make one of the most aggressive uh, project in the history of uh, Japanese business society, as a matter of fact. And s switching gears a little bit, well, how do you, I mean, you have now a presence, obviously, in many European countries. So how do you see the role of Rakuten in Europe? How do you see the future of Rakuten in Europe? Do you see it being as a big player? Or? Yeah. Of course. Well, you know, engineer-wise, we have many, many engineers in Europe, as I mentioned, not only in um, uh, France, but in UK, in uh, Germany, in Spain, in, we have Ukraine, uh, Belarus, uh, of course, Tel Aviv. Uh, so this is uh, our, the engineering technology hub as well. Uh, and uh, the, because EU is very unique in terms of very diversified culture, of course, Germany and France and UK are different, uh, it is very, very suitable uh, for our business model, because we are not trying to reinforce uh, the single uh, model, but we are trying to adopt and accept and accommodate the uh, local, uh, you know, uh, differentiated characteristics of each marketplace. With with all these experiences, you are a very successful entrepreneur. You have done things that many of us would just dream to, of, of doing. Plus, you're pushing these initiatives both in Japan. You have these institutes we just talked about. So having looking into the future, how I can, you can shape the culture for Lakutim, but also how you can change the way we, we shop, the way we do commerce. So how do you see the future of retail? How do you see the future of commerce? Because you, you mentioned you might be irrelevant yourself at some point. So what, what is your take if you had a crystal ball? What, what is the, the major trend for you that are important to you? Well, I think 
we are still in the very early stage of a retail revolution. I'm not talking about just re transaction, buying things, but we are talking about all the process of the demand creation, curation, maybe, you know, window shopping. Um, so I, I think now uh, we are entering into the uh, probably third or fourth stage of e-commerce. And step further, I think, uh, you know, in-store pickup, uh, O2O, uh, these things will become more and more important. So we're not talking about just, you know, transaction, you know, uh, redefinition of transaction. We're talking about the redefinition of entire marketing process. Right. right. And uh, that's why we like the company Ebates. Ebates, 95% of the traffic is organically generated. Uh, most of the companies rely heavily on search engines, such as Google, but they have very strong organic membership. I think in the future, what is most important is the sense of the membership. Whether you have a very engaged membership or not is going to be the most critical factor, uh, regardless of which direction you go. Very wise words. And on that, because we're running out of time, we'd like to thank you very much thank for you your time here on the web. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much.